Hey guys and welcome to Age of Empires 4 patch 10.257. The news comes out today, January 18th, 2022. But the patch is gonna launch tomorrow on January 19th. I'm super hyped, let's check out what's going on in this patch and how the game is gonna change. Hoping for some good balance fixes and bug fixes as well. Let's jump in. Starting tomorrow, you'll be able to download the first Age of Empires 4 patch of 2022. And we thought you might appreciate an early view of this patch list of this patch list ahead of the main event. Patch 10.257 focuses on balance changes and bug fixes across a variety of civilizations with the goal of addressing some of the most critical issues faced by each. As seen in the full list of patch notes below, we're addressing player feedback related to the Mongol civilization and the Fire Lancer unit feeling overpowered, as well as resolving several Delhi Sultanate bugs to ensure the civilization's distinct mechanics shine through. Note, upon updating to this patch, you'll no longer be able to utilize replays from previous updates. At times, saves will also be impacted, though we've taken additional steps to ensure your campaign saves are not impacted by this particular update. Skirmish saves from the previous patch are impacted and will no longer be accessible after you update. Join us on Twitch at 3 p.m. PT. That's is that midnight? Midnight tonight in Amsterdam? We should be in about three hours. For a special pre-patch stream, as members of the community and balance teams will be discussing the upcoming changes. Tune in on twitch.tv slash Age of Empires. And now without further ado, let's jump into it. The rate that we widen the acceptable pool of appropriately skilled players to match you with has been increased by 67%. We expect this to lead to faster matchups without proportionately compromising matchup quality. Well, at the end, it's always a balance. They're going to make game find a little bit quicker to adjust to the post release uh, player change, and uh, you might face people of a little bit more different rank. Of course, that will impact potentially match quality but it will also reduce the need to smurf for high-ranked players. We've been keeping a close eye on how long it takes to find a game in quick match and the quality of matchups across, across the ELO spectrum. One of our findings has been that our matchmaking system can be a bit too picky, such as that we often take a few minutes before deciding you to match you with another similarly skilled player. Yeah, this actually makes a lot of sense, because when you think about it, if two players that are ranked 200 and 250 on the ladder start searching at the exact same time if that is acceptable to the system it could match them in a second but how often do you find a game in a second not often you could as a developer create buckets uh, or let's say minimum wait times to see if you can make an even better match because maybe someone that's ranked 210 and 240 start queuing up 20 seconds later then you can match the 200 and the 210 and you can match the 240 and the 250. So some artificial delay actually makes a lot of sense in a matchmaker, even when you think you've got a decent enough match. And then you're going to get loads of analytics of hundreds of thousands of games after a like, couple of months after release like it is now. And then you can see, yeah, we can make changes. So maybe it actually will not uh, affect match matchup quality at all. Makes a lot of sense. This change increases the rate that we widen the pool of similarly skilled players determined by ELO so that you will match with that player or another with an acceptable ELO delta sooner. Scouts, ooh, we're jumping into the balance. Scouts now move 35% slower while carrying an animal carcass. Scouts are fast and have got a lot of hit points, so they're difficult to stop in the feudal age. We're increasing the counterplay options available versus the professional scout technology by slowing down scouts so they can be chased and killed while carrying carcasses. I think that's a really good change. It's going to positively affect the strength of this technology because now you have more counterplay. Maybe I, I still have to see exactly how fast they're going to be, but what, what I can say is this. Scouts have a movement speed of 165, makes them slower than the horsemen which is 181, I believe. The horseman gets one attack in every once in so often. So a horseman will slowly, it will take a minute, it will take a hot minute, uh, but a horseman will slowly kill a scout, not fast enough usually though for them to uh, bring the carcass back and they regenerate. But now 35% slower, the horseman will get so many more hits in and maybe, maybe archers can even get 
a really good amount of hits in on the scout. They have 120 health, so they would need 24 shots from an unupgraded archer. So if you have five archers, you need five shots. Maybe that accounts enough for the regen as well. So maybe five or six archers can much more easily get five shots off on a scout now that they're that much slower. There's also going to be a lot less yoinking deer from under the uh, enemy town center or even from under uh, an outpost protected English uh, proxy mill that's uh, harvesting deer on location. I don't know if 35 is enough, too much or just right. This will require playtesting. Horsemen, tier 2 to tier 4, ranged armor increased by 1 at each tier. Ooh. I think that's, I think that's really good. Horsemen actually have been getting better already, but the number one unit in Feudal is still archers. People have mass archer balls, and in critical numbers they do tend to beat horsemen. Longbows beat horsemen, archers beat horsemen. In small numbers they still have a place, but mostly when you see at the higher level, people make massive archer balls that spears cannot compete with and that horsemen can't even compete with. So if you're not forced into a horseman to counter archer balls, also because of the micro difficulty of horsemen since they clump up, then there's no need to make spears to counter horsemen either, and then it just all becomes archers. Just like Bart Simpson, always rock, always wins. Uh, does this mean that they have two ranged armor in feudal, three ranged armor by default in castle, and four ranged armor in, in imperial? That would be very strong. And then still upgradable by the blacksmith? Increased by plus one at each tier. It sounds progressive. Or it means they always have two baseline armor. Oh, zero in dark. One. Oh. Really? Uh, it could be zero baseline in dark. One in Feudal, two in Castle, and three in Imperial, which would actually barely change the... Uh, it would not change the Feudal situation then. Or it could mean <laughs> one, two, 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 two. I think it's hard to know exactly. But I like the concept, but let's see how it plays out. The Death Note. H4 focuses on hard unit counters to encourage mixed army compositions. We found that it was too difficult to tech switch into horsemen against archers as ranged focus fire picks off horsemen. Yeah, this doesn't really explain it, but it seems like only castle and imperial will change. So, 234. H2. Yeah, 234 or even 123. They were already at 1. Yeah. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3, 4. Not super clear to me. Holy... Yes! <laughs> Holy Roman Spearman now can activate the Spear Wall ability correctly. Okay, it's not Brace. Apparently it's called Spear Wall. Get it through your thick heads, guys. Uh, we were all naming this wrongly. Spear Wall. Fixed an instance of the Prelate getting stuck while inspiring. Alright, we need to test this because if this is true, that's fantastic. Yo, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the Grub Club. 69. Nice. Billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. 68.7 months sub. Thanks. Uh, and, and right now, prelates can try to inspire Siege, and they can actually inspire Bombards, but they can't inspire Mangonel and they get stuck. So I wonder if Relic fixed everything, where they never get stuck anymore not inspiring villagers. But they do, they do also uh, have the ability to uh, inspire all siege correctly and all units. Now, welcome to the Grub Club, Mangoon. Roost horse archer attack speed decrease. Okay, that's interesting. So let me let me give you some background. Horse archer, they beat everything, including their counter. They're very strong. Part of why Roost is so OP. Pro scouts is another reason. So these are two big Roost nerfs, which is totally deserved. Welcome to the Grub Club, Caron. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, decreased their attack speed. So uh, a nerf to the horse archer is a really good idea. And uh, recently there was a 
there was a finding that horse archer actually attacks faster than 2.0 welcome to the grub club bada thanks for the prime welcome welcome it is misworded uh well no i i don't think so yo welcome to the grub club amadeus we have no yeah okay there we go so someone made a video of attack speeds differing from the advertised value right so it turns out that among every single unit in the game on land two units attack with the correct attack speed three attack faster than advertised mostly rus and mongol go figure and everything else attacks slower than advertised and this was an extensive testing done by someone do you guys remember who and uh, horse archer was one of the main culprits of benefiting from a faster attack speed and they said that we've noticed which is fantastic that's actually fantastic the community comes together with the dev to improve things how is that possible well every attack consists of a pre-swing uh, a damage point and a backswing in order to make things look natural there is an animation it's not just bang <laughs> you know it's like bang and then and then you're ready for your next attack or whatever so there's like and there's an attack point so uh, and then there's a responsiveness thing in these games where you want things to feel responsive so if if there was a unit that took one second to do his attack half a second pre-swing damage point half a second backswing and he was completely locked in that animation and you would give him a new command a player would get frustrated they're like move you stupid units like all my units are stuck i issued an attack command and now i can't move them for a second who rooted them so uh, you're able to override certain animations pre-swing post-swing and this is normal and this is also the cause for animation cancelling which is how you can get faster attack rate by cancelling the backswing removing it and starting a new command and then doing an attack again this is preventable by a developer besides just having a duration that an attack takes they can also code in i'm not a programmer but i know it can be done uh, they can also code in a minimum attack uh, delay until the next attack so not only does it take a second to do pre-swing post-swing but you're also not allowed to start a new attack within half a second of the previous damage point happening make sense and then you would have a half second pre-swing and it would actually mean that you have a second between two attacks again which is exactly what you want so you need a, a hard-coded uh you need a hard-coded attack uh, delay which is called the cooldown attack delay cooldown uh, and and then you have like the natural pre-swing post-swing that leads to that same conclusion so what's, what's probably the problem is that they made uh, a pre-swing and post-swing for every unit but they didn't calculate part of the animation as attack speed so they say instead of saying well you have an attack every second they say you start an attack every second but because of post-swing he's now slower and not only that, they, they put in so much effort to make some uh, animations look natural that uh, some units have different types of attacks. Sometimes they attack like this, sometimes they attack like this. It actually means that the attack point is not always at the same time. And they did an averaging out of all these different animations and attack speeds that lead to a standard average attack speed. Kind of a mess. Uh, but they say they're going to be doing a robust fix in the future to address the issue, which is fantastic. For now, they're going to do something that needs to be nerfed, which is the Russo Horse Archer. I think it's a great communication and a great uh, conclusion. Uh, moving on. Horse Archers no longer receive additional attack speed and additional damage from the Incendiary Arrows technology. Great. This one is leading to a lot of issues for uh, various different units. And that's good. They'll probably have to make a pass at many other units as well. Fantastic explanation. Pleasure. <laughs> pleasure warrior monks now move slower while carrying a relic okay that's really good the others don't need to because they're already slow but here's another robust ruse nerf that i think really hits the spot because my god you know ruse is very strong even without horse archer and warrior monks called duggery and pro scouts honestly nothing wrong with the sif if you want proof of it look at ruse on water ruse on water is still the best sif like, Rus is the best Sif on water. Maybe French, maybe sometimes Mongol with the transport ship, Tower Rush can compete. Maybe Chinese with the Baochuan. But Rus is top four on water, guaranteed. 
and maybe top two, maybe top one, kind of depends. I'm not sure yet. The game is new. None of that uses warrior monks, pro scouts, or horse archers. So you know Rus is in a good spot. There's expansion builds, there's golden gate stone purchasing. They have so much things going for them that I wouldn't be worried as a Rus player. In fact, I'm still going to play Rus after this. But these are all deserved nerfs. Incongruence with the scout speed reduction, we're making this change to allow more counterplay options against warrior monks. Quickly grabbing up relics on the map. Yes! Mongols start with minus 50 wood. Good. Good patch. All of this has been really, really good so far. This, you know, Mongols, they're saving a thousand wood in a short game length. From not having to build houses. Uh, every Sif starts with a different amount of wood. Or at least the option is there. You would uh, imagine that everyone starts with a level playing field. Same food, same gold, same wood. It's actually not true. Delhi, Mongols, uh, Abbasid, they can deviate a bit. Minus 50 is good. Mongols are still strong if there was nothing else, but I'm hoping there's more down there. But it, it's a good change. This change is targeted at slowing down the opening and giving enemies more time to muster defense. They already get off to a fast start, not needing houses, and enhance stone income from the Ovu. Yes! Suck it, outpost abusers. Outpost cast increased from 70 wood to 100. This is good. This brings it in line with all the rest of the wood uh, requirement for outpost for other sifts, minus Rus, of course, who spends 175. Yeah. So 100 is what everyone pays. And with how much they save on houses, they really didn't need this. I understand the initial thought behind uh, Mongo outpost cheaper, though, because they don't have walls, so they need more outposts for defense, but they're being abused for offense, right? So that's good. I hope they're nerfing Yam Ara as well. It's kind of an issue. We found the outpost rushing strategy to be lo too low of an investment for Mongols. <laughs> I thought they were going to say too low of an IQ strat, but for Mongols, for how powerful and difficult it is to counter. Mongol outposts are still special as they provide the Yam network movement speed bonus. Yeah, and I think they need to address it. Just to reiterate and remind everyone, Outpost has a giant aura of speed via Yam, activated by the feudal landmark, Deer Stones. And if you pass outside of the circle, you are imbued with an aura effect, kind of like how when you drink one more uh, spirit, one more spirit before you go out into the snow. It's Christmas, one more spirit, and now you're not cold. You keep that with you for 30 seconds. It's a long time. They can go out of the aura of the outpost and still be fast for 30 seconds until the next outpost. It's pretty crazy. Yo, thanks. Welcome to the Grub Club Horta Tour. Thanks for the prime. Um, so I hope they'll think about fixing that in the future as well. Uh, fixed an exploit where it was possible to own multiple UFUs at the same time. And you know, people were actually doing this and I bet they had their justifications for it as well. To get it fixed faster. <laughs> Spreading awareness. <laughs> um, even some people in the top 100 was doing this. Pretty uh, Luckily, I didn't face too many. It's 20 seconds, I Daywalker. Hmm. The Mongol Kaganid Palace can now be packed correctly. Okay. We have removed the requirement from all Mongol buildings that they must have an empty queue in order to pack up. We f yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Oh, that's why he couldn't pack up. I guess it just cancels the queue and refund everything that's inside we feel this will improve the player experience when attempting to pack and unpack yeah that makes sense and they should also remove it from the all army hotkey delhi sultanate spear okay i'm a delhi main we have just unlocked final power level gg of course <laughs> this is about being happy with the bare necessities but we're gonna keep reading but i mean this alone is uh <laughs> Ariman. <laughs> Keep tech times are no longer increased while in the influence of a mosque. You know, I'm just gonna say, guys, I kind of predicted this. The increased research time bug that we have had has only been a thing since after the Christmas patch, right? But in my original Delhi Sultanate build order, I actually misspoke and I said that using a mask 
increases research time. So just saying, kind of kind of saw this coming. But uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. So this was making burning oil take longer. So if I've played recently, I've been avoiding uh, Wi-Fi mosque connecting my keep because of this. Piety base research time is now 135 seconds instead of 600. Nice. I hope they do something about Imperial times as well, but maybe they're not ready to do that. Explosive base research time is increased from 300 to 900. What? Three times as long. And it's the only one that isn't bugged. What does Piety do? Uh, more health for scholars, right? They tripled. This takes ages already. I know it's an Imperial upgrade. I guess they really wanted it to take 15 minutes. Wait, how many? Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. Instead of six minutes, 15. It is reducible by Mosque Wi-Fi. So you can put a mask on your docks and get some of these upgrades quicker. There is a problem though. Dock upgrades do not postpone like blacksmith upgrades. Yo, welcome to the Grub Club RTS Angel. What up, dude? Thanks for the sub. Uh, so if you get 890 seconds of research and your dock dies, it's reset away. What? They do if you have a mosque? Really? Oh. What if the mosque gets blown up in the same explosion? I wonder. Yo, welcome to the Grub Club, Martin. Well, well, we'll test that. We'll test that. This is like not ideal, but these are good. This now correctly matches other research times of the average cast technologies in Imperial Age. Technology research times for the Delhi Sultanate are based on their power level and the age that the technology is available in. Chaser cannon space research time from 450 to 1350. Houses don't spread Wi-Fi, Mouser Man. This now correctly matches other research times of highly expensive technologies in Imperial Age. I mean, Imperial, like Imperial Delhi, <laughs> is is kind of not good anyway. Like Delhi barely goes to Imperial anymore because they don't get any benefits within five minutes. All they get is hand cannons and bombardiers, bombards. That's all you get. All those research take until next game. Ah. Sanctity base research time reduced from 300 to 210. Great. Fantastic. Excellent. Hardened Spearman base research time. Oh, halved. Fantastic. Herbal medicine base research time. Oh, excellent. Honed blades. Oh, we can make uh, House of Learning again. <laughs> it will no longer take 21 and a half minutes, but instead six, five minutes, five minutes. And with scholars inside your mask, you can actually get that a minute after going Castle Age. We're going to see more men at arms again. Now we're a little bit less reliant on Stonewall Stone compound, uh, stone compound of the defender, compound of the defender, stone wall uh, shenanigans. Though I've become such a fan, it's such a toxic strand, stone walling everywhere. I'm gonna do it more. Delhi's gonna be really good in castle. Chinese fire lancer cast increase from 80 food, 20 wood, 20 gold to 120 food, 20 wood, 20 gold. Wow, that's a pretty big one, man. That's a lot. That's a lot of extra food. Changes nothing, Lul. Well, wood and gold would have changed more because of granary farming, but that's a fifty percent increase. And while I'm inclined to agree with you, like, like I can see, I can see how like sometimes it may not matter, but actually it does. Fifty percent food does matter a lot because you're spamming these guys, right? And you're selling your food to make gold if you can. And like, you're supposed to play not with infinite resources, but people are supposed to have a wrap on timings. So if now people are going to be like, well, Fire Lancers, uh, they're so spammable. He had a hundred, I killed him, he had another hundred. Then we're talking about extreme late game. Bonus versus, oh, wow. Bonus versus ranged unit type removed. 
So they're not like horsemen anymore. They're really, really bad at fighting now. After you absorb the initial uh, impact with spears, which everyone has access to now, right? You can actually just kill them with anything. Crossbows, archers. How much bonus did they have? Double. Same as horsemen. Right? Nine baseline damage, nine extra. We envision this unit as a hit and run raider that's effective versus building siege and villagers. In addition to this, the current Age of Empires damage is so powerful it can quickly nuke and kill most units. We've targeted these changes at make. I think that probably is area of effect damage. We've targeted these changes at making the Fire Lancer overall, yeah, less cast effective at fighting enemy troops. Fire Lancer Castle Age. Health increased from 135 to 155. Charge weapon area of effect damage will deal 50% damage down from what? 100%, I think? To the surrounding enemy units. Okay, so you need double the amount of fire, lan fire lancers to squish uh, a group of villagers or whatever it is. They're going to be a lot less good into knights and archers and everything, right? They will lose hard to spears because, well, they do have more health, but when they do get successful splash off, it's not as much. Like, you could beat Mass Knight with Fire Lancer before because of the splash, and now it looks like that's going to be a lot tougher. They will have more health, and this doesn't affect them, but they are so much more expensive and dealing less charge. It's really going to be a lot more of a niche unit. It's only 33% value nerf, 2 now costs the same as 3. Yeah, that's true. 50% increase in cost. Uh, uh. Torch that wow, torch damage reduced from 51 to 36. Health increased from 160 to 180 in Imperial. Weapon damage down. Just straight up their weapon damage down. Charge weapon damage reduced from 25 to 23. Charge weapon area of effect damage still only 50% and torch damage 40. So they get 36, 40 instead of 51, 55. Huge, huge nerfs. Very good for the casual player base. Fire Lancers are also good at higher level, for sure. You don't always get there, but they are good. Uh, and, and so they really only want you to make a couple. Pretty uh, weaker for Chinese. And, oh, that's it, which means, let's also talk about what we hoped was going to change, which didn't get changed. Uh, I was hoping for an Ovu nerf on Mongols. I was hoping for a better balance on water. For example, you can't really play English on Archipelago or Warring Islands. And I'm not sure that you can really play, like, let's say, Abbasid on Danube River. I don't know if that's possible. Abbasid on Danube River into, what, Rus, where they're spamming scouts at you. Delhi, who are, have, have the fishing boats that fight. So I was hoping for more balance there. Uh, demo ship rework, where they don't rely on the bug. Maybe a better way to make a comeback on water. Uh, reduced gathering rate of uh, fish, so that water is not uh, a necessity, even on hybrid water maps. Hmm... And maybe, well, Holy Roman, the Swabia is uh, quite strong. I was hoping for a Burgrave Palace buff, but I think a lot of this design rework maybe is coming in the spring patch, because this is a smaller one. This is the real first patch that was dependent on our multiplayer demonstration to them. Us showing them how the game is to be played. Right? Uh, we're going to read this, what's next as well, but I just wanted to take note on all this. The first patch they did, which had a number of changes, including to Delhi, as we all know, was mostly based off of alpha feedback from the insiders, which I was not a part of. Uh, people that have played the game like a year ago, you know, that kind of thing. This is the first real post-multiplayer patch. They did just come back from vacation. They sent out the patch briefly before. It's been, what? almost two weeks and this is uh what they have now it's more than i uh feared 
it's more than I feared. We get some really important fixes for Rus and Mongols and Delhi and Holy Roman. So I think it's fantastic. And there's more coming soon. Let's read. What's next? We believe patch 10.257 works towards our goal for fair and fun play across skill levels and provides more opportunity to execute at a high level with more of our sifts. We'll be keeping an eye out for your response as we continue to fine tune. In the meantime, we've already begun to prepare a February patch. Okay, that's not spring yet, so it's before spring. Based on what we've seen in the forums and other social channels, as well as our own experiences in-game. Right now, we're looking into strengthening the Abbasid dynasty, improving counterplay versus siege weapons, tuning demo ships, ensuring elephants. Yo, thanks for the Hi. prime. Welcome to the Grub Club, Chobro. Hello, hello, hello. Tuning demo ships, ensuring elephants, and mounted cavalry units no longer attack faster when their animation is cancelled, and a variety of other changes. So they haven't talked about scouts. I don't think scout rush, like 30, 50 scout rush, is a problem. It's a cheese, but it shouldn't work, especially now that bracing is a thing for everyone. Um, but yeah, elephant animation cancel, scout animation cancel is pretty, uh, pretty nasty. Most people don't enjoy it. Counterplay against Siege. Abbasid, bit stronger. Yeah. Good. Uh, pretty good communication, guys. We're getting a February patch. This patch is launching tomorrow. More known issues here. And I clicked this before. I don't want to click it because we know about hundreds of issues. And uh, this is going to list like three things. So who benefits the most? Well, let's let's talk about a few matchups. Uh, right now, Holy Roman loses hard to Mongols. How much is that going to change? We can now stop Lancers with Spears. And keeping in mind that Holy Roman Spears get an upgrade for three melee armor. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's the special upgrade they get. And they're made from the barracks, which makes the men at arms, which are strong. And Landsknecht. Holy Roman barracks is important. And not having been able to make Spears was a problem. And Prelate no longer gets bugged, so this is going to give much more space to Minework Palace tactics. I've already started working on them, and I'm so excited to try more. Holy Roman against Rus was another problem matchup, and against English. We get better horsemen against longbows. Not sure exactly how yet, I need to see. And Rus Horse Archer is nerfed, and nerfed, and Warrior Monk nerfed. No nerfs to Holy Roman, so it's actually directly addressing three problematic matchups for Holy Roman. English, Rus, and Mongols. Let's talk about it from Abbasid Dynasty. Abbasid Dynasty received no changes. They don't have to worry about double landmark snipe as much. Uh, Delhi is actually going to get stronger against them, right? Because of the buffs. Uh, Mongols will get weaker against them. Tower Rush a little weaker. Tower Rush a little weaker, uh, no more exploits, and this doesn't matter. So I don't think Mongols are nerfed enough. They'll still be the best, in my opinion, especially with Roost falling a bit. I think Mongols will still be the best uh, on all maps, except uh, Full Water. Uh, so Abbasid will benefit from this, though. They'll benefit from this. Um, they won't benefit from this. And I think Holy Roman Abbasid is an interesting matchup that... Might be favored for Holy Roman in general. Uh, so that's not going to get better for Abbasid at least. And any race, any Sif that doesn't make use of Pro Scouts is going to benefit. So who be does this benefit the most? English, Abbasid, and Delhi. Delhi can go Pro Scouts, but they don't get it until 7 minutes. And Roos literally has it at 5 minutes. Right? Um, so... Um, this, this benefits English, it benefits Delhi, it benefits Abbasid. Um, let's see. Chinese sometimes get it, French gets it, um, Rus gets it, Mongol can get it. Uh, there's one more Sif. Holy Roman sometimes gets it too. But it mostly helps English and Abbasid and Delhi. So that's, that's good. Those are not the best Sifs. Yeah, so I think it's going to actually help a lot of matchups. I think Delhi is going to be quite strong. Um, my my prediction of tier list, just kind of throwing it out there, 
Number one, Mongols. Uh, number one, Mongols. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to value the Rus changes. I think Rus is still good. They still have 13 and a half range Springles, bonus wood gathering. They've got the bounty, they've got the bonus food gathering. They still don't need much gold. They can still retrieve the carcasses. Mm, it will be some effect. I think Mongols will be number one. Chinese is going to drop a bit. Just a bit, right? It's only the Fire Lancer. They still have their Clock Tower Bombards. And Chinese benefit from other people's nerfs, so they benefit against Rus Mongol, but they uh, they go backwards a bit against Delhi and Holy Roman. Mm. Yeah. L let me uh, let me open the game and then I can see all the sifts together. Tier list. Okay, um, I think, let me close chat here for a second. We're gonna do it just like this. Mongols number one, I think. Um, I think Rus might still be number two. Um, I think Delhi might be three. French, they suffer from the Pro Scouts nerf a bit. And they benefit from Mongols and Rus nerf. They suffer a bit from not being able to abuse Delhi and Holy Roman Spears with their, with their knights. Um, English is still an early game Sif that needs to rely on pressure. Horsemen are gonna make it a bit harder for them. I think English, yo, welcome to the Grub Club. Thanks, Landario man. Grub HRE, Grub HRE, Grub HRE, show us your in-works tactic with the other landmark Grub HRE, Grub HRE, Grub HRE. Yeah, I'll, I'll show some mine work. I think English might be worst with the Abbasid 7. Um. French is four, Holy Roman five, and Chinese six. I think this is the new power structure. Maybe English Abbasid sw swapped, where they are seven and Abbasid is eight. Abbasid's uh, powerful in H3. Uh, English, powerful only in feudal. Uh, Chinese lost some of their power with Fire Lancers powerful in h4 this is why these are where they are they yeah they have a little bit less strength sometimes early game i think french is still like the standard let's say with their uh, knights that can heal holy roman got better of course it's very map dependent this is in general right i think not nerfed enough though it was good Mongol, you know, with Mongol and Rus, they both got nerfed fairly significantly, but they were both crutching big time on one strat. That, in an RTS, normally you have to scout and react, but with Rus Mongol, you always knew exactly what they were going to do, and they only did the one thing, and it was still too good. That one thing now got nerfed, the main thing. They still have a wide variety of other tactics that they can use, that they didn't need to dip into the skill tree of. That's why I think they are still uh, the best. Many, many alternative builds. Right, you don't have to tower rush every game. Uh, Delhi, I think, uh, buffed quite nicely. Bug fixes helps, and uh, strong standard. Yep, that's my thoughts on it.
we'll have to see how some of these changes work out. Some of this is assuming that horsemen are better in feudal, which dubious, uh, dubious phrasing. I'm not sure if it's true. Cool. We play one more day without the patch, and then tomorrow, maybe the whole stream, maybe part of the stream, the new patch will be there. Very exciting stuff.